firstly, good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here nice and early. I know there's a lot going on in New York this week, especially last night. And for those of you at the FinTech Awards, thanks for getting here extra early this morning. Um, New York this week, about three blocks away to the Hudson, world leaders are deciding what the world's going to look like in the next 20 years. World leaders in financial services are here today at Finnovate, and thank you for being here, because as an industry, we need to continue to collaborate together, not only as big banks and financial institutions, but with our FinTech partners and our friends to work together to build a better industry. So thank you, everyone, for being here, and be here next year, because we need to keep this journey going. Adela, thanks for the opportunity again to come back to Finnovate. It's so great to see so many old friends, meet new ones. Uh, one of the first people I actually met in New York when I came from Australia is April Rudin, and she's here. If you don't know April, you don't know anybody, so you've got to meet her. And put your hand up, April, wherever you are. Uh, make sure to say hi to her. She's a great friend. So some of you may be aware of the historic deployment of the world's first social humanoid robot uh, named Pepper in a bank branch that we at HSBC deployed last year uh, here in New York at our flagship branch in Manhattan at 452 Fifth Avenue. And of course, everyone should go and visit the branch later. Not, don't leave the sessions, but later when you have time, go visit our branch. It's not far from here or come uh, on Thursday after the conference ends. Um, and it's uh, with great honor that we share some new world first results from this case study here today at Finnovate um, as, a, as, a, as some uh, gratitude for this industry and this collaboration amongst fintech and banks to continue to push the needle of what is possible for customer experience in the 21st century in an industry that hasn't been as loved as it should be. So I guess, you know, I'm, I'm a kid, my parents are from Africa, I was born in Australia, I work for a British bank that has an Asian name, I live in New York. Um, when I came to America seven years ago, uh, this is kind of what banking seemed to look like here in this country, consumer finance. It was branch dependent. The biggest innovation in, in consumer finance was the cash vending machine. Then we sort of went to desktop and then kind of people started using a mobile phone. And of course, 10 years ago, if you would have said mobile banking, or 12 years ago, mobile banking, that was a dude getting in a car, going to visit a small business customer. Now with the, the advancement of the, the smartphone, the smartphone revolution, of course, two billion people globally now choose to bank when, where, and how they choose, in, in many cases, on a mobile device. And so we embarked on this innovation journey. When I was brought into HSBC, uh, my CEO gave me uh, a very daunting job description. He said, Jeremy, you're a stallion, go and run. That was the job description. Um, and uh, so we defined, the first thing we did was define innovation, which we defined as doing something differently that creates value. The two variables. The two key dependencies, the first is changing the paradigm, but it has to add value, whether it's to your shareholders, to your customers, to your people, or to the other stakeholders in the communities you serve. Uh, because ideas are free, talk is cheap, execution in, in a big organization, let alone financial services that's highly regulated, is really, really hard. So that's how we discipline ourselves, doing something differently that creates value. And this is kind of what banking looks like now for us. It's a we, we don't talk about the bank of the future as some arbitrary concept in the never-never. We talk about now, a platform agnostic ecosystem that allows our customers to bank when, where, and how they choose. If it's in a branch, if it's on their phone, if it's with a smartwatch, if it's via voice, if it's with a robot. That's what we aspire to be, and that's what we're building, and that's what we've delivered now. And the good news is, you don't have to take my word for any of this. We ask our friends at Google. Banking, we are in the financial services industry. People forget that. We're here to serve. And we're competing in 2019 in an experiential world. People aren't comparing banks to banks. They're comparing banks to their last best customer experience. Chances are it was on a mobile device, and chances are it wasn't with a bank. But in an experiential world, being in the services business is an advantage. I think banking now is the ultimate buy low, sell high moment. Because we're competing in an experiential world. Our industry hasn't been loved. We've been focusing on other things for the last 10 years. Now is the time to refocus on delivering a superior, world-class customer experience, working with fintech, working with outside technology partners, 
to deliver what we promise our customers and our communities. And when I started HSBC, my CEO and I literally looked at each other in 2015 and we said, we want customers to love banking, period. Didn't matter which bank. That was our overarching vision. And that's been our North Star in everything we've done, which includes putting the world's first robot in a bank branch named Pepper, uh, which you'll see uh, behind us. Uh, and of course, um, just as a sort of a side fun, uh, fun thing, um, I say Pepper. It's my Australian accent. I know it's softened over the seven years I've lived in this great nation. Uh, but a lot of my colleagues, when I would talk about Pepper, particularly prior to launching, would be repeating what I would say, and they'd be like, oh, we got this robot called Pepper coming. And of course, I would laugh because I didn't want to correct them that it should, they should say Pepper with their accent. But hey, here we are. So whatever I say that starts with P-E-P, -E you know what I'm supposed to mean. Pepper, Pepper, I interchange it. <laughs> so, so here are some, and by the way, Pepper is an experience. First and foremost, it's an experience. And I'm going to talk through the case study for the first time in any public uh, or industry event um, as a promise I made to Adela and all of our friends here at Finnovate to talk through in the greatest depth yet with some brand new data that we haven't told anyone until we're going to share with you today just how phenomenal this case study has been. Uh, but some of these photos uh, actually are some of the different. So we started at 452 Fifth Avenue, right in the heart of Manhattan. But we're in Seattle. We're in Miami. We're in Soho. We're in Beverly Hills. We're in, we're in Silicon Valley. We recently went to Canada, so Pepper went to a second country within HSBC. And without telling you which the third country is going to be, the fourth country, the fifth country, or the sixth country over the next year, you're going to see the further robotic revolution of our customer experience to enhance our wonderful people. But the pictures tell the story. And so does the data. And I can't begin to emphasize with sincere humility that when was the last time a customer walked into a bank branch and walked out with a smile on their face? Better yet, when was the last time a customer walked into a bank branch, not only with a smile out of their face when they left, but they actually voluntarily took a selfie and then uploaded that on social media? Has anyone ever done that or heard that or seen that or felt that, experienced that? We've seen that repeatedly where we've launched Pepper the robot at HSBC branches around the country, and now, of course, around the world in Canada and other countries to follow. And we started this journey to what I said earlier about Pablo and I, the, the vision around making wanting customers to love banking again, and wanting our people to love banking again. And so we set ourselves this, this sort of overarching ambition with the innovation agenda of we had this bank branch at 452 Fifth Avenue, that had been a bank branch since 1966, where Senator Bobby Kennedy cut the ribbon on the bank branch opening in 1966. And when I joined HSBC in 2015, if you would have seen a photo of the branch opening in 1966 and 2015, the only difference was Senator Kennedy wasn't in the photo, and it was black and white versus color. It was, it was the, same, the, same, the same layout, the same experience, um, and you know, it wasn't necessarily fit for purpose for making customers want to love banking again. And on Fifth Avenue, the heart of New York City, the capital of the universe, where millions of people every day are commuting within a half a mile radius of our location, where people in this marketplace where everyone's telling you it's digital, nobody wants to interact with each other, yet millions of people patronize Fifth Avenue retail. And if you would go and Google, if you, you can do it right now, go and Google Maps, and type in banks on Fifth Avenue, you'll see all these red dots on Fifth Avenue of all these branches. They're all as uninviting as each other. But yet, retail on Fifth Avenue, there are cutting edge, innovative retail experiences, whether that's Nike Town, the Adidas Concept Store, uh, you know, Apple, the Google pop-up that comes every year, or indeed, even Tiffany's, a 100-plus-year-old retailer that's trying to transform itself into the 21st century, has thinking about how do they get drive more foot traffic to their experience. Now you can have breakfast at Tiffany's if anyone hasn't done it. So we thought, why should, bank, why should our banking customers be, be left behind? Why should we race to the bottom like everybody else? We wanted to set a new expectation and a new gold standard. So we think about, often 
people ask me like, Jeremy, what, you know, head of innovation, like what's, what's gonna change? What's the big, and, and I don't think about what's gonna change. I think about what's not gonna change because it's a lot easier. And what's not gonna change is that customers will desire the best quality products or service at the lowest price. I think that's held true long before I was on this earth and I think it'll continue to hold true after I'm gone. And so therefore, what technologies could we deploy to move that equilibrium or that curve closer to a, a more optimal equilibrium point for our customers and our people? And that's why we worked with SoftBank Robotics to deploy Pepper, the world's leading social humanoid robot, and be the first major bank in the world and certainly in the, in the US to deploy it in a bank branch. And we didn't just think, hey, let's put a robot there. We actually spent, we, we designed a study um, led by Juliana Cole and my team, who was actually in one of the photos earlier. She's here today somewhere. Um, Jules, thank you, by the way, for all your leadership. We designed a study, a very comprehensive study over the course of three months, where we measured every single thing that moved in our flagship branch on Fifth Avenue. Customers, non-customers, what they were doing, what they were seeing, what they were looking at, what was the branding behind what they were looking at. We wanted the most insightful, data-rich analysis we could find. And one of the most fascinating things that we discovered was that 73%, so three quarters effectively, of the time of our customers coming into our flagship branch, on Fifth Avenue by the way, was being spent on what we would describe as a binary or generic interaction. Customer walks in, where's the ATM? Where's the teller? Can I get foreign currency? Where's the subway? Where's the best place to get coffee around here? What's the weather? Binary generic interactions that aren't fun for a customer and aren't fun for our highly trained staff. Because let's have empathy for our people. A customer is in a hurry. By the way, New Yorkers, let's face it, a minute is like a day of how much patience the average New Yorker has on Fifth Avenue, especially if you're in your lunch break, you're on Fifth Avenue, you want to deposit a check, or you're in quickly to get some cash, and you're lining up to find out that the ATM's right behind you. Customer doesn't feel very, very uh, empowered, and our people feel, you know, it's sort of, it's embarrassing for them to say, hey, it's the ATM's right behind you, you missed it. It's not a great experience. And we also know the best practice for the industry is four minute waiting times. So we thought if, if, if all that Pepper could help us do when our first iteration was reducing the customer waiting time from four minutes from best practice for industry and freeing up 73% of time, so three quarters of our customer and our, and our highly trained staff time, to take those binary generic interactions outside of the line and the supply chain and maybe gamify that experience, make it more enjoyable, offer customers the opportunity to self-serve, that would be a huge win. What we didn't find out is what actually, what we didn't expect is what happened next, which I'll talk about in, in a second. The way we designed the deployment of Pepper was we had six key objectives. The first is we wanted to drive more foot traffic off Fifth Avenue. We want customers to love banking and we want them to come and visit our branch and our space at 452 Fifth Avenue. We want them to come off of Fifth Avenue inside. And if more foot traffic, as the Wall Street Journal kindly pointed out in one of the headlines, means more opportunities for our highly trained staff to do what they do best, which is to serve customers and to serve more customers. And as the Wall Street Journal said, five times average daily foot traffic. We've actually seen higher, but it's probably held true at about five times since we launched. The third is we wanted to reduce customer waiting times and improve the waiting experience for those customers. The fourth is we wanted to free up the very valuable time of our highly trained staff, our bankers. Again, for them to do more high value added tasks and to do what they do best to deepen relationships and grow their businesses and serve customers. We also wanted to educate customers about their self service options and other HSBC products and services, some financial inclusion, uh, opportunities, financial literacy, uh, how to videos, short videos, how to deposit a check and how to you know, use the app and sort of help empower customers in a non-threatening way. Because we know that 68% of Americans would rather watch a YouTube video than ask a person how to do something. That's not a millennial trend, that's an American trend. 68% of Americans. And the six, and maybe the less sexy, but arguably the most important, is we wanted to drive customer and employee engagement. We want customers to love banking. And the results from our people and our customers have been incredible. 
incredible. So when we deployed Pepper, we had so much foot traffic on the first day of launch that we estimate that within three hours of launch, the investment paid off because of all the foot traffic and all the new business and all the opportunities for our wonderful people to, to help serve out their, their customers, new customers, and their needs fulfilled. That was in June of 2018. Where are we in September of 2019? And so today, I'm pleased to share with you that in the 14 months since we deployed Pepper the Robot the first time at our flagship branch in Manhattan, very close to here, this is a world first for, it, for, for Finnovate, we have seen a 41% increase in new business and new accounts at our flagship branch compared to the, the 14 months prior without Pepper. 41%. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm really sorry for the one or two haters that are left because this is the worst gimmick in history because this continues to be front page news in every market we go. It continues to be the, the topic of conversation amongst our industry and the results continue to be staggering and sustainable. So come and experience Pepper for yourself. And another exclusive for everyone today is you're going to get to meet Pepper. The Meet Pepper experience is real and it's coming to Finnovate. And at 10.30 during the coffee break, come outside to the VIP lounge and you'll get to experience Pepper for yourself. And I'm also told from, from Adela and others that um, it is uh, not mandatory, but it's highly encouraged to take a selfie with Pepper. Um, you've got to use the hashtag Finnovate and the hashtag, hashtag Meet Pepper. Um, and the best photo that's uploaded on Instagram and LinkedIn will get some, some amazing um, accolade, um, probably lots of likes, and maybe dinner for two with a robot. Uh. <laughs> uh, but of course, please, experience it for yourself and then share that experience. And you will join the four and a half billion, with a B, media impressions relating to a bank with a robot in 2019, which is 99% positive sentiment, by the way. When was the last time a bank story went viral around the world that's newsworthy that was positive? I don't think anyone can remember because it probably hasn't happened many times. And you only have to search the hashtag Meet Pepper on all forms of social media to see those smiles because it's an experience. That's the industry we're in. Financial services is an experience. Transactions is an experience. We're in an experiential world. That's how we're competing today. And that's why collaboration with fintech partners is so important. Whether what we did with robots, what we've done with wearables, what we've done with lending platforms, what we've done with a whole host of other services to rebuild a 154-year-old bank to meet the needs of customers in the 21st century, to, to build this bank of the future. It's a platform agnostic ecosystem to allow customers to bank when, where, and how they choose. We've had over 40, we'll get, this week we'll, we'll, we'll surpass our 40,000th, 40,000th customer interaction with Pepper. 40,000th. When we deployed Pepper, for example, in Seattle, at our Seattle branch, within one month of deployment, we got branch customer satisfaction scores back. It was the, the highest ever recorded branch customer satisfaction score in Seattle one month after Pepper had launched. In the 14 months since we've deployed Pepper, as I said, and I shared exclusively this morning, 41% increase in new business at our flagship branch here in Manhattan compared to the 14 months prior without Pepper. The Pepper effect is real. There isn't a week that goes by that a branch manager in HSBC does not reach out to me, whether in the US or, or around the world, saying, hey, crazy Aussie guy, how do we get one of those robots in my branch? Because it's the way it's driving engagement, customer satisfaction, and most importantly, employee engagement and utility. Why? Because Pepper is there to serve and delight and excite customers and engage and drive our people to go and do much higher value added tasks and services that they're trained to do and they want to do. Because the way we soon changed the iter second iteration of Pepper, so the first iteration we wanted to save the 73% of time, we wanted to give that back to customers, gamify some binary generic interactions. Then we soon realized through some data we got through from SoftBank for customer interactions, and by the way, there's no customer data, no PII, just to be clear. We get anonymized, randomized data at the end of the week. How many people asked about a credit card? How many people asked to deposit a check? How many people were interested to get a selfie, et cetera? 
the number one product related question was credit cards. It was about credit cards. So then we soon, uh, and part of the, the, the success of innovation is to, to be at the intersection. So we did a fintech partnership with a company called Evoker on credit card, app, straight through credit card application journeys that we launched about six months prior to Pepper. And we, we soon decided when a customer was going to ask Pepper about a credit card, when she'd learn the basic products and ter terms of the, and services of the feature, she would then have the opportunity to talk to a banker about that card. But then when we realized that was the number one product related question, we then iterated so not only could customer talk to a banker about the credit card, but if a customer so chooses to get a text message or an email, which we don't capture, we don't store, with Pepper, they will get sent the, t the link to the URL for that mobile journey for them to do it on their own device in their own time. Not only to find out more about that credit card, for example, but then to apply for it if they so choose. That's an example of taking offline onto online retail and driving new business channels that we never thought existed. And we had such success with credit cards, we're soon to launch our personal loan journey the same way, a mortgage journey. If a customer asks about internet banking today, and Pepper shows you and tells you in a, in a friendly, non-threatening, gamified way about internet banking, and then she often says, would you like to download the app? And she could send you the link to the, to the App Store or the, or the Google Play Store to download the HSBC internet banking app on your device in your own time. It's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. We've learned so much about uh, our industry, our people, uh, through this historic case study. And really, the, the final thing I'll say is, is, where, where is where do we think the end game is with Pepper, actually? Is we think Pepper is a mobile bank in, in ways that our industry hasn't really conceived yet. If you think about an ATM, it's an expensive fixed asset that's stuck to a wall that distributes cash like a vending machine. By the way, Pepper is a fraction of the cost of, a vending of, a, of an ATM. As we integrate these straight through journeys through the Pepper experience, as our industry continues to change and become more cashless with digitization of distribution of cash, and I'm not talking crypto, I'm talking just the digital distribution of cash from your financial institution, where you can apply for a loan through a Pepper interaction on your own device and your own security, your own authentication, and apply for that loan, get an instant credit decision and be funded within a day. Pepper can be anywhere. Pepper could be in a shopping center, shopping mall. Pepper could be at a, at a community event. Pepper could be in your, in your corporate headquarters. That's a mobile bank in a gamified, experiential way. That's the future of this industry. That's what we're all here to work towards for a better outcome for our people and our customers. And don't be fearful of robotics and automation because it's one for us. We've seen, when you, see, when you have record foot traffic in new business, our frontline staff had to, the frontline team grew at 452. My team's grown. Other aspects of the bank that have been touched by this experience have grown. Contrary to the narrative that robots were going to replace everything, we've seen this bit. This is a growth story. And at 10.30, you'll be able to experience it yourself at the VIP lounge. Don't forget hashtag meet Pepper, hashtag Finnovate. I believe there's some questions, there might be some questions from, um, through Slido, so if there are any, I'm happy to take them. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to share this history with you today. Um, and make sure you come back next year, because we as an industry need to continue to work together to deliver these superior outcomes for our customers. Because if we're still talking in five years' time about fintech and banking, we both lose. We've got to work together. Thank you very much. Other questions? Oh, oh wow. All right, well, anonymous, we can't mess with, oh, OK. Uh, OK, well, let's start with the top. Most surprising has definitely been credit cards, like I said earlier. Uh, Excite and delight, then it soon became an offline to online channel for credit cards. Is a complete digital experience possible without people? Um, I don't think it is. I think for, for some services, yes, it, it's preferable for customers. But as you move up the, the value chain or the complexity of your life or the, your wealth, um, ultimately, financial services is a people business. Um, and so that human-to-human -human interaction actually is going to be a premium, I think, over time. And we'll see that through the, as the industry shakes out. So that's why we have both options for customers. When you walk into our branch, you don't have a robot. You have your, our people 
or a robot if that's your choice. Just like at the airport, you have kiosks, you can check it on your phone, or you can line up. We give customers choice. How do you choose where to send Pepper? Well, now it's becoming really, really hard because we're, we're getting inundated with countries and branches around the world. And we've got a really, um, we've got a, Jules, who I mentioned on my team earlier, we've got a very robust framework about how we measure which branches we want to go to, what are the demographics of the community, the area, the location of the branch, what does the branch look like. Uh, we train, we work with the teams. We have a program called the Pepper Ninja program to get the, the it's another level of engagement for the branch staff um, who are part of the Pepper project. So it's getting harder and harder though. Um, why do we look back in five years and say, well, like I said, it's the worst gimmick in history because it continues to be a huge story in every market um, and the results are not only staggering, but they're sustainable. 41% increase in new business at our flagship branch where we first launched 14 months later compared to the 14 months prior. Worst gimmick in history. Uh, biggest challenge. Uh, now we're seeing less and less challenges because everyone's just bought in. But I think at the time, was working with the right amount of people, so the story didn't leak before we eventually launched. Uh, we also designed it deliberately. We have fantastic partners with SoftBank Robotics. We designed it deliberately, no customer data, no PII. We also wanted the experiences to be fast. So the average session time, and we've had over 40,000 of them, the average session time with Pepper is, is about 56 seconds, 57 seconds, 56 seconds. So we want it to be short, sharp, and fun because it has to be optimal compared to lining up, in a lining up but also Pepper is, is an interactive experience. It's not a one-way kiosk. It's not fun. That's boring. It's overused. It's an interaction. It's social. It's, it's gamification of banking in a way he's never thought before. Yeah, that was funny, Boston Dynamics. You see the video on Twitter yesterday of, of, of Atlas? It's a, I, I visited Boston Dynamics. I've seen Atlas in person. It's a bit, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, if you haven't, just look on Twitter. What is the cost of Pepper deployment at each branch? Uh, well, the marginal costs are relatively low because the way we design the, we, we designed, we always thought at scale first. So we didn't think of like putting a robot in a bank branch and setting and forgetting. We thought global, we thought global expansion from day one. So the way we design the operating system of Pepper with support of SoftBank and their amazing team, uh, really it doesn't feel like another team, it's like one big family, um, was scalability and deployment of the use cases and customization to be fast. So when, when Canada decided they wanted to launch, we did it in six weeks. And when other countries are going to launch, we've got, we're going to do it really quickly because we built a platform that is deliberately scalable and can be easily customizable. And now SoftBank, actually, we're working with them to deploy an entire new operating system for Pepper, given the success of what we've done with, uh, with our deployments. And that's going to launch probably in January, I think, if it's not too cold. You know, Pepper needs a break, and it's winter and all the rest of it. Um, uh, I'm, they're moving too quickly. What's been the reaction of branch staff? It's been incredible. It's, it's, it's really been incredible. In fact, I remember, um, and someone in the room from our team could vouch for this, I remember when we did some testing of Pepper um, in February of 18. And we had our board in town, our HSBC board. I was asked to deliver an innovation presentation. Um, and it happened to coincide with when we were doing field testing with Pepper the robot. So you can imagine coming into this board presentation and then bringing a robot, how utterly perplexed they all looked, um, and rightly so, frankly. It, it is even crazy thinking about it now. Um, so, so um, what was the question again? Uh, it was about uh, the engagement. So, so um, our branch manager, Ken, said to us, I'll never forget, it was on the Friday. It was like a quiet Friday because we wanted to do some testing without too much disruption. And I remember he pulled me aside and he said, JB, look, look, look. And I said, Ken, what am I looking at? You know, it's a, it's a big branch, 25,000 square feet, three floors, and there was a robot. And he's like, look, look, look at the smiles on my people's faces. And that's when it hit me. That's when it hit me. When, you're, when he said he's never seen engagement like that in an industry that's been so beaten up. And when you're in a frontline staff in a beaten up industry, that's when it hit us as a team. And then we thought about other ways to help engage the employees and our frontline staff as much as our customers. And it's been staggering. And by the way, there are other things we've done, whether it's with wearable tech or other deployments, again, world first to deploy wearable technology in a bank branch to empower our, our people. 
to give them the tools to, to be even more efficient, be more safe, be more secure, um, that we learned from the Pepper deployment when Ken was telling us about that level of engagement of his staff and how motivated they were, how empowered they felt, how they wanted to come to work early the next day. And those metrics are invaluable in an industry that's been unloved for so long. And with that, it's been an honor to be here today. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at 10.30. Come and meet Pepper. Hashtag meet Pepper. Hashtag Finnovate at the VIP Lounge. Thank you very much.